you can um, you can just snap along with me. It's looking like it's time for me to rhyme, cause if I don't, I'm thinking that it would be a crime. The beat is dope, the atmosphere in here is contagious. I feel courageous and I know where the stage is. And I got pages that I can spit on a dime and I will put it on you like Nielsen. Put the lime in the coconut, drank the bowl up. Yup, that's old school, but that's why I brought it up. Cause I'm not ashamed to be showing my age. Cause if 50's the new 20, yo, then I'm all the rage. I still engage in activities that stimulate my mind and body and my soul. I won't hesitate to Formulate deep thoughts and keep my shit fresh. You could call me old man, but do it with respect, cause I've earned it. There was a bridge to the table, but I burned it. There was a bridge to the table, but I burned it. There was a bridge to the table, but I burned that shit. They tend to you as you sleep, as you dream, as you shower, as you devour the drippings of a hopeful lover. The blood elders you never met remind you they were here, are here yet, watching you bloom, grooming you by the faded light of the moon and the night street fluorescence. You feel their presence, mostly in the dark or alone or in an embrace. You scan your space, can nearly make out a someone or something familiar and you feel safe, safe enough to use their offered medicine to heal, safe enough to feel it all and be thankful for the love and guidance they offer. It's why they lurk, to give to and guide us, protect and provide us, sometimes hide us, cloaking us invisible to soul-sucking entities and other vampiric forces. The lurking let you know if you are open to and grateful for them, that nearly nothing bad in this world can touch you. Thank you. Yeah. The angry black man is making them uncomfortable, brooding and bulky and beautiful in his rage. He is on stage at a political rally, pumping his clenched fist in the air to the beat of a rhythm no one else can hear and his black hoodie rises and falls with each thrust to the heavens, yelling why and when. The graying on his scalp is hidden from the crowd, but they can all sense he is older, wiser, and it's no surprise to many that he is angrier than most of the angry black men they've encountered. But they were taken by surprise, and news cameras are rolling and cell phones are pointed at them, and they dare not leave to have their human decency questioned. The angry black man cries, spit flies from within him as he notices a few black men and women in the crowd that don't seem angry at all, don't have the fire in their eyes and guts he deems a birthright essential to the shifting of the paradigm. They look at him with disdain and embarrassment. The crowd gasps. Some don't understand why he's so angry. Others do, but also that they should act befuddled too, or else. But Obama, someone shouts. But Kamala, shouts another. But Shaq shouts someone else. The angry black man shakes his head in defiance and exacerbation, his tears hitting those closest to him. Admit that you did this to us, he yells. Admit that you are fully responsible for our plight and the plight of others who suffer in the face of your greed, zealotry, and isms, he shouts. Admit this and help this nation heal, he screams. A white man avoiding suspicion positions himself on a rooftop overlooking the angry black man and the crowd. He carries a deep and elongated leather case. He kneels and opens it. Roses, carnations, sunflowers, and daisies shower upon the angry black man, and the crowd looks up to see the man on the roof as the culprit of the assault. Mayhem ensues. A guttural roar springs from the crowd, low at first, then rising like a tsunami of release and sorrow. People fall to their knees, others huddle in hugs while the collective cry persists. Men in blue with badges rush to the stage and take turns embracing the angry black man, saying thank you and I love you and you've opened my eyes. The man on the rooftop flees in ecstasy. The black people in the crowd now shout brother at the top of their lungs. 
None of it is caught on camera because cell phones are dropped and news crews are caught up in the emotional orgy. The angry black man surveys his handiwork in awe. The screaming and hugging do not subdue. He waits for an opportune moment to escape the melee on stage. The angry black man jogs home in violent strides. His pregnant daughter greets him upon entering, asking, how was the thing? And the angry black man puts one arm around her and another one on her belly and says, white people are crazy. <laughs> Primarily, she was unaware of what was actually happening or of what was to follow. She only knew she felt different. The synergy of the sentient had shifted gradually, steadily, inevitably. She felt less of them, more of herself. And her forests, seas, roads, streets, and skies sighed with relief. A collective pause in spoken words. A static chatter's violent hum coursed through her under tombs, graveyards, and crematoriums, keeping track of the inflicted and the fallen. Faiths and philosophies questioned and confirmed by jokers, thieves, the compliant and complacent, stilled by restricted distances, upheld and untraveled, while normalcy unraveled and musicians played on. Through the long days and narrow spaces, she remembered barely when it had felt similarly. Not the same, but more her, less them. And she remembered, this will not last. Yeah. Oh. Close your eyes and picture the color of blood, of bone, of flesh. Picture the color of urine and fecal matter. Sometimes we have to put aside what we've learned and concentrate on what we know. Step into what is true and leave the lie where it lies. Take a look inside and discover the deeper you allow yourself to go, the more you have to trust who you are, are becoming, will become, and you will be grateful. Color lines are smoke and mirrors and the gate that is kept to protect the lie. Know that every single one of us is worthy of love and affection and consideration and warmth and kindness, you, me, everyone. Let your third eye and your sixth sense bring you forth to call an old thing new. To denounce our differences and rejoice in kind is what you will answer when asked, where are you going? Your two feet will be firmly planted on shaky ground because after all, how else would you prove your conviction, your commitment to the future, if not by calling out xenophobes and bigots close to you? Respectfully, of course, and perhaps sitting by a fire or after sex. And don't ever say, sorry I brought it up. Don't panic. The earth will eventually restabilize and the collective foul sense of security and no one will find it odd that there is peace on the streets until of course they do. It may take a few centuries, a few decades, a few hundred thousands of people or more. Organize a flash mob of millions gyrating to an improvised yet meticulously choreographed piece that evokes the pain of the past, the denial of the present, and the possibilities of the future. Lead them in dance rhythm and poetry to cutting their ties to fear and pride, to guilt and shame, to that. That's just the way it is. And lead them to some funky gumption. Call us by our name, earthlings, and watch your spirit rise and struggle through history, conditioning, and the ever dreadful comfort zone until finally you can have a party and invite everyone, 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 and everyone will understand how blind we've been and how blind we need to be to be truly human. You may, you must. Be true when calling up your spirit for it is like raising the dead. If you're not careful, what will appear is a rendition half alive, a zombie-esque replica mimicking instead of moving and motivating. Call your spirit up and let it help you help others until everyone sees what you know to be true. You are me, and I am you. In Lakesh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
She manned the movement of our friends and family into sympathetic waters where waves of questions like, what kind of a man pulled me deep into an abyss of shame and guilt, and the waves of my arms could not block the onslaught or get me to safety? I was a sham. I was an outcast, cast as the villain in the play, and no longer able to play with her head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. The dance was done, and I couldn't dance myself out of this one, even if I tried. And trust me, I tried. <laughs> tried and convicted by a jury of peering eyes, once peers, now foes, once cheers, now blows, once commeers, now goes, once clear, now close. The road to her. I knew I was fucked when I saw all the cars in the driveway and on the block in front of the pad, and I couldn't pad myself enough from her mother yelling, you stupid mother, and I sauntered through the open door. My home looked like an open house. For whatever reason, I attempted to reason with them. I thought I'd run a fast one by them, but then chose to run fast by them straight to her to make a plea. Please, she said. Please, I said. Please don't, she asked. Please don't, I answered. Please, 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 baby, please, baby, please, 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 baby, I thought. You lost me, she said. I'm lost, I said. You're full of shit, she said. Shit. We had a good run, though, right, I asked. Run, she said. So I did. She called it dick drunk, how she felt after that night as I tended bar. Me, the pusher man. She, the careless consumer, lost in transaction. Experience shows in every practiced gesture much more than feelings. The freedom to be without constraint or judgment unleashes fire. Passion unbridled, truth at the core of it all has made her dick drunk. Thank you. <laughs>